sometimes you uh, you need to get down to um, to sort of deeper depths of the water. Uh, there might be a big pool. Uh, again, this is a, a good clear water fly, um, but the BB shrimp uh, is designed um, to give you depth, uh, but also a very natural looking fly. Uh, this time uh, we've got a size 10 uh, K4AY, so the lighter wire version of the, uh, the partridge uh, shrimp hook, grub hook. Uh, and we're going to load it up with two tungsten beads. Um, now many of you um, who tie on jig hooks will be, uh, will be buying a lot of uh, slotted beads. Uh, for this one, it is easier tying with countersunk beads. So um, beads that have a, have a flat, uh, flat cut at the back uh, with the larger hole. Uh, and the reason that is, is, you'll see in a second, is because we, how we position them and how we add the flies, uh, this is really important. Um, so first of all, we're going to put in a copper bead. Um, it doesn't have to be copper, you can use gold, um, black nickel. If you're on a hot spot, you can put in a pink bead at this point or a hot orange bead. And then, uh, but for this particular one, I'm now going to put in a, a black nickel uh, bead um, behind it. And very importantly, I've put the first bead on with the small hole facing the eye of the hook. Uh, and the larger hole at the back. And the second bead, uh, this black nickel, uh, I'm placing with the big hole at the front and the little hole at the back. So the sat, pop that in the vise, it might be a bit easier to see. So the sat flat edges to flat edge. Um, so they'll kiss together. But to begin with on this fly, we're going to keep them apart. And um, we're going to do this by starting our thread in between the two beads and laying a little uh, little thread base there right in the middle of the hook so you want it going either side of the point of the hook take that forward slightly we're actually going to tie in a hackle at this point um, for this i tend to use english partridge um, so i've got my skin here and you want to take the feathers from the neck area. You can use some of the wing feathers, uh, but you tend to get a, a better barring effect from these neck hackles. Um, you don't want a too big of a hackle. Um, it really is just to, uh, this is going to provide you your leggy effect that we've been talking about uh, in the shrimp. So I've got a feather here, uh, the hackle length is just a bit longer than from the shank to the point. And to prepare the feather, I remove its horrible nasty fibers at the bottom because they're too webbed and they don't offer anything for our fly. And as if we were tying a North Country spider, we actually stroke the fibers backwards that we want on the fly and we have a tip section that faces forward and we tie it in again as if we were the north country spider so tip facing backwards fibers we want facing forward and the curve of the feather going upwards and put that down and trap it against the top of the hook there and cut away the unneeded section uh, and then find our hackle pliers and take the tip of the feather take our thread just in front and now we're going to make sure our draping feathers are facing backwards and don't get caught on that thread Take it round the hook once and then a second turn 
touching turns but just in front of the original and all the way round to place them back up and now you can take your thread through the feather but behind get that tight and then place a couple in front don't worry if you caught a couple of fibers the beads will help sort that out and with the scissors let's trim that out there so you've got your spider style wing and we're actually going to whip finish off at this point and cut our thread off right now we would slide that front bead back and start our fly as we well, do the next part of the fly as we would have done a normal fly to begin with and build up some thread okay, take that off you'll notice that this bead wants to go over there but it won't go fully um, that will be secured in place with the next uh, with the next tie at the back of the hook uh, and now we're going to add in our dubbing. Uh, this can be either a simple hair's ear blend. Uh, you can go colorful if you want to really grab focus. If you know you're fishing in water, whether it's caddis, I know that's not our topic, but you can put a dark brown, a blackish thorax, and then a, a sort of caddis green back to it. So it is um, adaptable to different situations. Here I've actually got a squirrel blend um, with a little bit of UV fleck in it. Uh, this is by Fadsner, it's called uh, Natural Candy. Um, we're just going to add that to the thread. Because it's squirrel, unlike with the, um, unlike with the hairs here where we actually work the dubbing, um, squirrel has a lot more underfur and it's a little bit softer, so it will take to uh, the nano silk which we're using here uh, much much easier so we don't need to to wax our thread uh, if you've got a pre-wax thread um, that won't be an issue at all uh, you'll be able to tie straight from the off uh, we're just going to build a little a little dam so that bead can't now go forward and we want it tapering forward now uh, towards the eye of the hook, so getting slimmer as we go, uh, because of the shape of the um, of the shrimp will always get narrower uh, either side of the middle of the fly. So here we are. That's same with squirrel, light hairs it. It's got a lot of guard fibers. So we've got that leggy, leggy appearance as well. So we've got a small bit, and we we'll just give a rough whip finish and take it out there so don't worry we will be doing more there in a short while to tidy everything up now we want to stroke those hackle fibers back because we're going to tie this net speed up against here now's when you do a fair number of thread turns because you're going to build a thread dam essentially against that bead to hold it in place that will make the rest of your time much easier and now once we know that that's more or less secure we can take the thread back to where we want the fly to begin and like we did with our previous shrimp, we're going to use um, the Semperfly Ultra Thin Skin in, uh, in Clear, uh, which you'll remember is that opaque um, colour. So it's adding adding a bit, a bit of interest to the back of the fly. Cut the point shape in there. Doesn't need to be too perfect as long as it 
more or less centered and place on your side of the hook and allow the thread to rotate that on to the top of the shank so it's in the right place to tie in after. Now I take my thread up to the top and so again this has a has a cheating rib uh, where we use the thread and using the same dubbing uh, you can go lighter if you want um, but with the shrimp they tend to be a uniform shade unless they've got the orange hemoglobin spot uh, it tends to be uniform along their um, along their body so we want to build up a nice thick part of dubbing uh, which is then going to taper to the back of the fly so working on that um, again very dubbing hungry fly so each time I'm just pulling out a bit of dubbing and teasing it out so it's not too too tight together the worst thing you can do is try and dub too much all in one go uh, you'll find that you'll get yourself into more problems than you want uh, don't ever worry about if you need to add more dubbing it's easier to add dubbing than take it away Now we can have a nice tight bit at the back of the hook there. And like with many of the shrimp, put one turn behind the back just to bring your thread round. And now what I want to do make sure is I begin to stroke these hackle fibers down. And then bring my back forward, place one turn and let go of the back just so you can keep the pressure on the thread at this point. Make sure it's nice and centered. Place another turn, bounces back. And again, and then this turn is up against that bead. It's where it gets a little bit testing. Is they're actually going to put a turn now between the beads. So what you need to try and do is not catch too many of the fibers of the thread because we don't want them to move from where pointing down. So a little bit of concentration at this point. Then work your thread through. Further, use your other hand to straighten everything out there. Push everything back. And you can use your thumb now there. Make sure the back is in position. And then do your next turn and depending on where you placed it will depend on how many segments you get in front so once you've placed that last couple of turns put some locking turns in front of the back and hold on to the eye of the hook and just rock that hook back in there that will allow you to just clip the back material out and then using your thread, just tidy up that area. And then with the whip finish tool, go in and finish the fly off. What you can do if you want to, to firstly to cut the thread out, open the V, push against the thread, and knock that out. There we go. So there you'll see some leggy 
fibers are trapped down, you've got the back and then you've got the weight of the beads uh, to get that fly right down. Uh, what you can do to hold the rib in place, same with a lot of shrimp, is just put a little bit of um, UV uh, glue along the back and secure that straight away. Uh, I wouldn't use a normal super glue uh, because that can sometimes soak into the um, into the uh, rubbery back material and uh, cause it to go brittle and break whereas uh, a UV glue will cure on top so it doesn't affect uh, the attributes that you're going for. Uh, so there you have it, the BB shrimp, one to get you right down in clear water and usually one that the, uh, the fish won't say no to.